tonight about the voice of God. And God speaks in many ways. He really does. But his voice is, you know, people that work with him pretty well understand that when you hear the Holy Spirit, you're hearing from God. And when people are delivered up before the false Messiah, it's going to be that voice that speaks through them. You're not to even premeditate what you'll say. So let's, let's talk just a moment about the voice of God so that we might recognize it in certain ways. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Psalms 81. Psalms 81. And we do ask a word of wisdom from our Father as we study his word. Verse 81, let's pick it up with verse 7. Thou callest in trouble, and I deliver thee. He always will, beloved. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. Do you want me to read that again? I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. Thunder. He doesn't let too many people know about this. I prove thee at the waters of Meribah. That's strife, okay? Selah. And then, of course, Selah is a psalm. It means stop, pause, stop the music a second, think, meditate. I'm going to connect something in the next line. Hear, O my people. And I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. There shall no strange God be in thee. That upsets our father. You want to hear him thunder? Just be one of his elect and try it. Neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord that brought God that which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. You can always count on the Holy Spirit as long as you concentrate, as long as you love him, as long as you're honest with him. It it doesn't matter what the world thinks of you. You've got hypocrites, liars. You've got people that dream stuff up. It's what, you see, God knows your heart. And that's why God blesses whom he will and kind of lets go by the wayside in the trash those that he wishes. He places it in your mind if you're willing, if you're ready. And kind of secondly, if you know his voice, you have to kind of recognize it when you hear it. Turn with me to Psalms 29. 29, while we're right here in the Psalms. Verse 3. Let's pick it up with 2. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name, Yahweh. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, Kadesh in Hebrew. The voice of the Lord is up on the waters. Now, wait a minute. He's already said my people, and here he's bringing up waters again. What was it we learned this morning? The waters are what? They're people, okay? The Lord is upon the waters, the people. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. Don't forget it. Two times for emphasis. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon, the strongest of all. The cedars that are noted for their size and pureness, perfection. He maketh them also to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Sorry on like a young unicorn, the voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadash. Kadash means even the holy 
mountain. The Lord thundereth. My, my. Interesting. What? As a matter of fact, that says the secret place of his thunder. Now go with me to St. John chapter 12. New Testament. Let's, let's find out what the New Testament says about this thing while we're at it here. John 12. John chapter 12. Pick it up in verse 23. And Jesus answered um, uh, in them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. We're coming up on that time is what he's saying. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. In other words, it couldn't produce if it didn't fall into the ground, die, and have a new body. Uh, it bringeth forth much fruit. His crucifixion has brought, back, brought to more, forth more uh, souls. Think, Yahweh's Yeshua, Jesus Christ. That grain, that, that soul that was crucified. He who was perfect and we're not. And set that example whereby millions and millions call upon his name, whether they understand totally the word or not. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his uh, life in this world, understand, in this world, what do you got in this world? Okay, you're looking forward to the eternity, right? Uh, shall keep it unto life eternal. We're in this for the long haul, not the short haul. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Do you want to be blessed? Do you want father to bless you today? Then serve him. It doesn't matter. God will always bless you when you're serving him. And God has always said, touch not mine anointed. And the wrath of God falls upon those that do. How precious it is that he paid the price that we, his body taking the stripes, we get the healing, we get the blessings. And how fantastic it is when we study his word as we are right here now, this minute, his Holy Spirit assists us in understanding the clarity and the simplicity in which Christ taught. That is his charisma given to you. Charisma is gift. It's his gift to you. It's 27. Now, in, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, Glorify thy name. Now listen up for me. This is why we came here. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. When is he going to glorify it again? At the end. Now, coming up. Get ready. The people, therefore, that stood by heard it and said, it thundered. Others said, an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice come not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And it was looking forward to that time. Hey, he's going to be again pretty soon, my friends. He can spiritually now, but de facto, he's going to be cast to this earth. Some, as servants of God, have duties through attaining and listening to the word of 
God. Now, it thundered. No, it didn't thunder. It was the voice of the living God. Do you recognize it when he touches you? Chapter 10, the great book of Revelation. Let's go a little deeper into our Father's Word. Let's go with a deeper understanding of that that is approaching, that that is expected of his servants. As we go into this 10th chapter, I want to help you to remember that the 10th chapter as it unfolds, we are still under the influence of the sixth trump. Now, we can't go anywhere with this if you don't know what that means. The sixth trump means that that son of perdition has been cast out and is here on earth as the spurious Messiah. Okay. That's what's happening in this 10th chapter. I want you to know that. Satan is here as the spurious Messiah in the 10th chapter. We're just getting ready for the seventh trump to sound. What does that mean to you? It means that we're just about ready for this time to end, this dispensation of time. And at that seventh trump, we go immediately after about 15 minutes. That's how long it takes God into the Lord's day, which is how long? A thousand years. It's called the millennium. And that's exactly where we would be as that seventh trump sounds. What, are, what does God expect you to do at that time? What are you supposed to do even in the millennium? Well, I don't know, but he does, and let's find out. Chapter 10, under the influence of the sixth trump, and verse 1 reads, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head. Even that Shekinah, he was that close to the Father. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. This is a real special angel, but inasmuch as God calls him an angel and not the angel of God, then we have to accept that we are talking about a mighty angel. Verse 2, and he had in his hand a little book, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. His, his, uh, he's... His right foot was on the sea, his left foot on the earth, meaning he was controlling. He's got it under control. He's in charge. He's in command. And we're still under the sixth trump. I, I want you to take strength from that in as much as God has assured us that Regardless of where we are or when we are on this earth, we have power over our enemies in Christ's name. You just have to practice and utilize the authority that is given to you. Or what are you, a wimp? Or do you know how to exercise authority? You might take a little lesson from your father and let it thunder occasionally for discipline's sake. So he has it under control even though Satan is here on earth. Let that strengthen you. Let it give you courage because so will you. You're going to stand against that one regardless of what. And he cried with a loud voice and as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, Seven thunders uttered their voices. Well, I, I wonder who that could be. Well, how much does it take to wake us up? Was that thunder I heard? No, it was the voice of God. Well, what did he say? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. 
Verse 4. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. Well, boy, that just would seem a little unfair, wouldn't it? No, it's not. Because they're already written. It's the voice of God. That's what the whole book's about. Verse 5, and the angel said, I'm sorry, and the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven. This boy's in charge, okay? You got it? It's important what he says. Six, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there shall be time no longer. What does that mean? It should mean a lot to you. I, I warned you we were under the influence of the sixth trump at the beginning of this chapter. When that angel says, it's over. There is time no more. Do you, do you understand that? We don't, you don't have to have that interpreted. It means that's the end. It's over. The, the lady sang, okay? <laughs> and, and it means the seventh trump is sounding. Now, do you know what the rest of this chapter talks about is what you're going to be doing in the millennium and what you should know already. But it will go into the millennium for you. And perhaps you'll understand a little better why God is looking for priests from this morning's sermon and Dennis's sermon even this afternoon. And do you know something? I just saw the title. We didn't discuss. I never tell people what to teach. I don't care what people teach. If they teach something different from me, they're going to teach it somewhere else. Everybody's got a right to be ignorant, okay? <laughs> they do. And I'll fine for that right, you know. <laughs> Bless their hearts. There's none of us perfect. I want to make my point about that. But you know what? When you do your homework and study, you don't want to veer away from God's word. When you see it, teach it. And don't make any apologies. It is written. The angel said, it's over. There is time no more. So naturally, a student of the word knows the seventh trump has just sounded and, or he's telling us what's going to happen later then. Well, let's get to it. Verse seven. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished as, as what? As he hath declared to his servants the prophets. I mean, it was written long ago, the minor prophets, the major prophets, it's all written. Those 10 thunders are all written. We already know about the voice of God. We study the voice of God all the time. And you know something? It pleases him a lot because he blesses us. The growth in this ministry is just fantastic. But it's not our growth. It is our labors, but it's God's growth, okay? God blesses us, and that is really fantastic. He blesses his word, and we're simply servants. We carry that word forth. And we're all one body, and you're just as much a part of that body as I am. We get it done because we are can-do type people. Don't let anybody get in our way, or God will finish them off. He will take care of them. We are on a mission, and that is to take God's word forth. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? 320 television stations in Canada and America. 
And I got some news for you. We're very possibly going on television all over Europe very soon. I can say that in this crowd because I don't want to let Satan know. Okay. <laughs> I trust you all. I know who's I know who would be a traitor to me just like that, okay? And I like to kind of dangle them along occasionally and make light of them, you know. And then just go ahead and sue them for everything they've got. You know? Enjoy it. All right. Uh, God blesses his people, all right? And it's beautiful. Truth is a wonderful thing. He told the prophets the mystery, and that mystery is important. Paul spoke of it. How many people are familiar with it? Verse 8, and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. Nine, and I went unto the angel and stood and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Now, let me ask you a question. If there's no more time, it's over. Why is he giving you a new book? He just said the rest of it was written, not all of it. He didn't write about what we're going to be doing in the millennium a whole lot. But he's going to teach us. And we're going to eat that book. God's word shall never change. I'm going to say that one more time. If time is all over and the mystery of God is already written through the prophets... Why is he giving us another book? The book is what happens after the seventh trump to you. What he expects of you. Verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and I ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. God's word is always sweet, but sometimes discipline can be a little bitter to the tummy, and that's what we're going to be teaching in the millennium, is discipline. Time to stop playing church. Why? Their souls depend on it, whether they're going to heaven or hell. And you are going, he's looking for people that can, make, that can stand for something. And mainly, he wants it to be his word. One more verse here, verse 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Now, let me ask you a question. If time is all over, and if the Seventh trump has sounded. Who are you going to be talking to? All these peoples and nations. It's going to be the people of the millennium. It's a time of teaching. That's why they're going to be talking and prophesying and teaching. And that's what that little book pertains to. Is the millennium age... And those ten thunders, which is the voice of God. And what transpires. And yet, even that, in a sense, is written. Don't think he's talking here about the little book back in Ezekiel chapter 2. You know, that, that's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about a little book that is for after all is finished in this dispensation of time. Now, you, you all are going for the long haul, aren't you? Well, all right. Well, that's what we're talking about here. Okay. 
So we still have one word that kind of might get back here in the gray matter and say, this mystery of God, if it's all written, what, what, why don't I know it? What? I mean, I've heard Paul talk about it and refer to it. and Actually, you do know. But you know what? I'm going to remind you anyway. <laughs> I'm going to do it. We're going to talk about that mystery a little bit because it has a great deal to do with this. Let me put it in this way. How much does it have to do with it? It brings you to the position of have something to do with the millennium and being an assistant to your heavenly father. That's pretty important. So, um, turn with me to the book of Ephesians. And I want you to turn to chapter 3. And chapter 3 of that great book of Ephesians. Do you you all remember what chapter 1 verse 4 says? I chose you before the foundations of the earth. Okay. Let that kind of open your mind a little bit. Chapter 3 verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given you me to you work, that dispensation of time where you can be saved by grace, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote a four in few words, he said, I didn't talk about it a whole lot, and he didn't. He mentioned it in Romans 16, 25 and didn't even explain it. Whereby when you read and may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Kind of vague, what? Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. What spirit? The voice of God. The Holy Spirit. Six, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. All in Christ, whomsoever will, for their own peoples. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift, the charisma of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. That dunamis. And there is power in the gift of God. Eight, unto me, who am less than the least of all saints. He he always felt bad. He never could forgive himself for persecuting the church. Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ? And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world, this is important, hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities, that's even the powers on high, angel, angelic being, and powers in heavenly places, there you go, even fallen angels, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Do you have it, the mystery of the wisdom of God? You have to listen to his voice to understand. According to the eternal purpose which he proposed, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence uh, uh, and the faith of him. You have that power, you have that boldness, and you should exercise it. I mean, that is to say, if, if you be a child of God, oh my, but this mystery is so deep. Whew. 
You just work and work. And all they talk about is the mystery of God and the mystery of God. Why don't they? He said it's written. He said, I told them. And, and, and it is, and you know it. So I'm going to close this little jewel up by taking you to Matthew chapter 13. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time there. You all know the parable of the sower. I, I, I don't even have to tell you what I'm about to. I wouldn't have to. I could quit right here, and you all could walk home just, I mean, happy as larks whenever you got it all settled out, the mystery. The parable of the sower, Luke said, hey, from Jesus' mouth, if you don't understand this parable, you're not going to understand any of them. You're, you're, you're just out there in left field, and you're never going to make it if you don't understand this parable, the parable of the sower. And, of course, it's an agriculture term, and, you know, it's so simple. In, in a harder culture, as seeds fall, when you're broadcasting, much like we broadcast, okay, through television, some of those seeds are going to hit on some precious ground, like you all, Okay. I mean, how many of you came into this ministry through television? Let me see. Dern, all of you. <laughs> well, just about. Okay. But uh, that's something, it's according to where the seeds fall, you know. And, and then, too, God knows his children pretty well. And all of them fell in these various places, and he said, that's the word of God. Now, now tell me again, what is the word of God? It's the voice of God. Okay. So you're sowing the voice of God. Some are going to hear and love it, and some are not. And that's okay. That's all right. Um, but um, so that you know you're well-founded in the mystery of God that is a mystery to most of the world... It's just that sometimes you don't recognize it yourself of how much of a mystery it is because it's so simple to you that you get used to it, all right? You're, you're a little old baby Christian chewing on beef steak every day. And then you realize, I'm not a little bitty Christian. I'm a giant. I'm a child of God. I know the mystery. Verse 35 of the parable of the sower, you know the tares and the wheat and so on and so forth. We can cut the chase, all right, to verse 35. And it reads, Matthew 13, 35, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world, the mystery of God. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. See, it takes a little encouragement every once in a while. Not even his apostles understood what he was talking about. And, and he told them, you know, hey, here's a field. And an enemy came along in the night and sowed a bunch of stuff in here. It looks like our kids, but they're not. They look so much like our kids that if we start trying to root them out, we're going to do a whole bunch of hurt and damage. And besides that, God likes for his kids to have to figure out stuff on their own. And some people will say, I just, I just seem like I suffer all the time. Well, wake up. You don't take stuff, okay? Stuff is for, um, well, I don't know. I got a name for it, and it won't work. <laughs> um, <clears throat> don't take, you know, you're a child of God, and his word is important. Don't put up with a bunch of trash and nonsense that people get out of books written by other people. I get a, I get a real big kick out of 
some people now that are studying authority. A preacher having to teach his people that he has authority. I, I thought it was God that had the authority. I missed something somewhere. And you know, the funny part about it is, is their little book is written by a communist who wrote it to help convert slave labor in China. Now, you've got to go a long way if you've got to go that far to get authority. You know, now, that's kind of stretching the blanket, isn't it? I'd be afraid it'd slip over my old toes. You know, anyway, anyway, many strange things in these end times. You want to be set for it. You've always got a bunch of freaks that get on ego trips. And isn't our father enough of an ego for us to know you're his child? That he died on the cross for you? Don't you think that makes you important? That he wants to give you this little book that you can partake of and carry on for him in the millennium so that you can teach there. So he's got somebody he can count on. That he knows you understand the mystery that somebody slipped in the patch and threw out some bad stuff. All right? That's, that's the mystery. Okay? 37. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. That's Christ's name. Okay? He's, that's Christ in the flesh. The field is the world. Now, that's not complicated, is it? The fields, the world, this world age. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. That's the children that care about the kingdom. That's you. That care about your father's voice. That care about his word. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Eh, the wicked one. We got so many. Now, when you get it down to uno, okay, that pretty well lines it out, okay? The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Make no apologies for teaching it. That's part of the mystery, the secret that has been kept. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. And so it is. That being the mystery of God. Well, that's the first, one of the first things I learned when I came into this ministry. Ain't he good to you? Man, that is fantastic. Well, I didn't know it was really such a great ministry. Well, why haven't you taught all your kinfolks then? Why is it such a secret to them? What'd they call you? They said you had what? They said you belonged to a what? I think you're all right myself. I don't care what they say, okay? But that is the mystery, and it's so simple. It's right under their faces, right under their noses. And, of course, we have to, you know, we're, when I was a child, I spake as a child. We're adults, and we know that if someone that cannot and does not have the courage to stand against the false one like you do, that it could be eternal damnation for them. If they, if, they were, if they came into the truth and didn't have the courage to stand, that just as it was at the first advent, many things are in samples to us. And those in samples are that, um, where, where did everybody go on the night Christ was crucified except just one or two? He sent John home with mama. And there was a few women stayed on the hill back off over there. Where'd everybody else go? I mean, they followed him for a long time. He fed 5,000 of them. That doesn't have anything to do with Dennis's story. <laughs> but out of feeding 5,000, he still spoke of his mystery. He said... When you gather up those crumbs, when you got a bunch of people together, be careful of the fragments. 
because you're going to have, when you get a bunch of people together, you're going to have a few yo-yos there that are going to teach you a bunch of junk if you listen to them. Okay. Now, thank God we don't have that in this crowd. But every once in a while, I have had seven, I've had 2,548 volunteers for the two witnesses, the last prophet. Okay. I don't know how many last you get, you know, but we get them. All right. You got, re I mean, people that want to think they are really something on a stick, okay? We have, I guess that doesn't sound too good, does it? <laughs> now that I think about that. You know, I don't have a teleprompter or anything that tells me what to say. And sometimes, sometimes it gets said. Okay. Anyway, teach God's word. Don't mess around with a bunch of fuzzy wuzzies. God is supreme and God is able. And God will show us through. We know now that we have to partake of that little book that there is more to this. And and naturally, you that have studied through Ezekiel, you know part of what's in that little book pertaining to the millennium. We've studied chapter by chapter and verse by verse. But believe me, there's more to it. It's coming. And really, all he asks is when there's time no more that you take it and eat it and be ready to serve. Are you going to do that? Of course you are. You're going to do whatever your father tells you to do. Why? You're a servant. Why, why am I a servant? Because you love him. And do you know something? Any way you want to cut it, he is your servant because he serves us all. When he washed their feet, he told them, you know, I am your servant in this case. You know, and, and that's the way it is. That's the way the cookie crumbles in Christianity, is um, who God gives the most, he expects the most. He expects that from them. Why? Because he's the one that gives the gifts. So, we are coming to this time that you must remain focused. I suppose that if anyone were to call my ministry by some title, and, and I, I hope no one ever does, it would be, they would say, that's the old boy that tells them always stay focused. You got it. Focused on what? That's important. God's word. And you'll never go wrong. You'll always be blessed. Listen, we're coming into a time where we see God is so good to you that he lays out types every day. Boy, are you getting them now in Iraq. And it's not over of what will happen concerning Babylon. Babylon's going to fall. Babylon is fallen. But that doesn't mean, even though, I, I, I suppose we could just maybe, let's just, let's just try to speculate a little bit, okay? Today we've noticed several times it kept saying Babylon is fallen, is fallen, but something's still going on that really shouldn't be here. And it was written down below that the devils and everything were really working within there. And what God said is even after it falls, and we're talking about spiritual Babylon, there's still work to be done. We're not through. We're not, well, but dear Brother Murray, that's the millennium. And I am, am going to get my little chariot and I'm going to get my team, and I'm going to ride around, and I'm going to be with the Lord forever. <laughs> oh, I've never read that in the Bible. It seems to me like God's always got something for us to do, you know, because he loves us. That's why. And um, I guarantee you that what we do there, we're going to be very happy doing it. Because, you see... Those people that are still tangled up in those devil things are your brothers and sisters. 
why do you think you were sent here? Because you're special? You were sent because you're supposed to help them. You were sent because you're, you're supposed to realize they're the ones that need the help. Now, I'm not telling somebody to, get, to uh, go out on the street corner and start passing out leaflets. We're way past that, okay? We're way, way past that. God is going to use you in a way that he will see that you prophesy. He will see. Did it not say somewhere else? Let me see. Somebody help me. Somewhere it says sons and daughters will prophesy. Where, where is that written? Joel. And is it not written also in the book of Acts in the New Testament? You know, I knew. I was just putting you all on. It's test time. That's pop-up test, all right? Anyway, um, he's got something for you to do. We must build them up, not tear them down, okay? We have to care. And we have some people that are sick. And we know that when that next book comes out, there won't be any sickness. Everybody will have a sound mind. And it'll give you a lot more yardage to work with, you know? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Whew. I think I better quit. <laughs> I love you all, and I want you to know we've come to a wonderful time and a benchmark that our Father's Word is opening and blossoming into a new time. And thank God even the prophets wanted to live at this time. Even the prophets wanted to experience what you have the opportunity to experience is to serve God. Serve Him with dignity. Serve Him protecting the credibility of the Kadash, as He said in today's tonight's scripture. That's that holy mountain, you know. I, I wish I could say that we were all perfect, but good Lord, look at you. <laughs> you know, but we'll do our best and we'll get by. So, um, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm really letting y'all out a little bit early. I should lay a little something else on you, but. <laughs> I will simply well together what we have covered from this morning and now. Come out of her, my people. What do you say about the rest of them? Sorry, everything's got its time and place. There, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. There's a time to rejoice. There's a time to weep. Everything must be done in its own time in its rightful place. And boy, are we moving into an exciting time. And I'm, I, I feel really geared for it and ready, okay? It's gonna be exciting. It truly is. What a time to serve the Lord. And when he says, come out of her, my people, then we tied that in with saying, well, how, how did they get to be not his people? Do you remember this morning? He said, my people are lost. As good as I am, as strong as my voice is, my people are lost because of lack of knowledge because they won't stay focused. So that's what you wanna do. Stay focused on the word of God. Now, let me tell you something. God's gonna to speak to you in many different ways. There are people in this room that God has spoken to. I'm very familiar with it. He's got my telephone number even, okay? He's never called me on the telephone but he has spoken to me, all right? I, I never go into that. I do not use that as a teaching tool by any means because it's not. But there's many others that he speaks to. Always remember, um, in the book of Kings, God speaks sometimes in just a still, soft voice. You might just barely hear it. 
but it's still him. And when he can get your attention with a still, soft voice, he knows you. He knows you can hear him and you can discern. So um, come out. Don't allow yourself to get wrapped up in confusion because you're going to hear, I mean, you're going to hear evangelists go nuts over this Babylon thing and other things, and they're going to tie a lot of things to it that uh, are going to confuse a lot of people. I do not, and we cannot afford for it to confuse you. You must rightly divide the Word of God and keep the ten supernatural kings divided away from the ten earthly kings. That's very important. Now, I've summarized it and um, come out of her. Don't allow yourself. You know, the sad part is, is how Satan works. As I said this morning, he, he used Nimrod way back in the 10th the chapter of Genesis to call it um, Baal, the gate of God. Doesn't that sound sweet? Well, wouldn't you like to join that church? You know, the gate of God. It just sounds so close. You, know? you better focus on God's word. You're in a time when many are going to be led astray. And with that, do you know, I was always taught when you're a teacher, and when you're finished, shut up <laughs> and go home. So I love you all a bunch. Indeed, you are children of God, and he loves you very much. Thank you for that. And stay focused on his word. Free introductory package. Say, this is something we would like to offer for a one-time gift to all the new folk that study with us. This introductory package gives you a monthly newsletter, which means each month you will receive a newsletter with a Bible study on it. Hey, raising funds? No way. We're not beggars. We're Bible teachers. That's what it consists of. A tape catalog that will give you all the topics that are covered. And the Mark of the Beast tape. What is this Mark of the Beast? Is it really on your forehead? No, Satan's considerably more intelligent than that. It's in your forehead, which is to say, in your mind. Have you been deceived? This is a free offer to you, one time to each new student. Say, find out what's really happening and what the story is on the mark of the beast. And he might reach out.